So first of all, we'll start off with the harbour process. So the harbour process was created by Fritz Harbour. Um, and basically it's a process for making nitrogen, uh, so for making ammonia using nitrogen and hydrogen. And so the harbour process is combining um, nitrogen, atmospheric nitrogen from the air with hydrogen, which has been mainly derived from natural gases like methane, and we're combining these to make ammonia. And so this reaction is a reversible reaction and it's also an exothermic reaction. And so it's important to note um, that this is a reversible reaction. So we can apply concepts of Le Chatelier's principle and also concepts um, surrounding that, um, adding in more reactant to then produce more product and our changes with reaction conditions in order to optimize our production of ammonia. So it's really important to note what our reaction conditions are for this because these are examinable concepts. So first of all we want to talk about the catalyst for the conditions. So the catalyst is actually slightly more complicated than your typical catalyst for this reaction. So we use an iron catalyst um, to speed up the reaction because this is obviously adding surface area to the reaction and if you have a greater surface area the rate of reaction is going to be greater. And so that's really important in this process because nitrogen and hydrogen are both gases, ammonia is also a gas and so it's hard to have greater surface area with a gas. So we then got to use a solid catalyst in order to add that surface area. But it's a lot more complex than just using typical um, pure iron solid. So it actually has um, potassium hydroxide added to it as a promoter. And so what a promoter does is it's just a substance which increases its efficiency. And so it's typically using magnetite, which is Fe3O4, um, fused with potassium oxide, so K2O, or aluminium oxide, which is Al2O3, or in some cases, um, calcium oxide, uh, which is CaO, um, and then that's put into a very fine powder. Um, and obviously putting it into a fine powder is going to maximize that surface area. And so maximizing that surface area is going to greatly increase its availability to then catalyze the reaction. Um, so next we need to discuss the pressure which is used for this reaction. So the pressure is going to vary from each different manufacturing plant to another um, based on their budget for um, their reaction conditions. Um, however, it's always going to be a high pressure. So when we use the pressure for this one, um, it's typically going to be around 200 atmospheres. And so the reason that we would use a high pressure for this reaction is because um, you want to have a maximum pressure for the reaction because it's better that we have four moles of reactant um, and only two moles of product so that you can then compare this back all the way to Le Chatelier's principle. And so if you compare this back to Le Chatelier's principle, um, you can recall that if we increase the pressure, the reaction is going to move to whichever direction minimizes the total pressure. And so this is going to be the side of the reaction with the least moles of gas overall. And so this means that if we increase the pressure, we're going to force the reaction to proceed from left to right. Because we've got, um, we can see we've got four moles of gas in the reactants. So one mole from the nitrogen, one mole from the hydrogen, oh, sorry, three moles from the hydrogen. And then on the right side of the reaction, we only have two moles coming from the ammonia. And so if we increase the pressure, it's gonna force our reaction in the forward direction to produce the least moles of gas 
because in high pressure there's less space for that gas to uptake. And so you might think, well, if we're going to go for 200 atmospheres to greatly improve that production of ammonia, why don't we just go higher? Why don't we just push it to 500 atmospheres? Why don't we make it a thousand atmospheres? And so we could, but it's all to do with practicality. And so that's because if we increase the um, pressure, we do force the reaction to proceed left to right. However, we know that high pressure systems are gonna be much more reactive, which you may think that sounds good. We want the reaction to occur more, but it will, if we increase the pressure too much, um, it's going to be substantially more reactive and thus incredibly dangerous. And so it can actually be substantially more dangerous than even manufacturing explosives. Um, and particularly considering since we're producing ammonia, which is commonly used in explosives as well, um, systems like these under too high pressure um, are likely to be highly explosive. And so if anything within the high pressure system um, system is compromised, it can then result in a very, very large explosion. Um, so there's quite a fine line between keeping high pressure for efficiency and a low pressure for safety. So that's the main reason which you wouldn't go above 200 atmospheres. There's also obviously the concept of cost. So it's quite expensive to keep something as at a very high pressure because obviously they need to put more energy into the system in order to maintain that high pressure for the reaction. And so if that reaction system is at too high pressure, they're obviously putting in a lot more energy into the system, which is gonna be costing them more in electricity. And obviously the purpose of this process is to be producing ammonia for um, an industrial purpose to be sold and so they don't want it to cost them more to produce the ammonia than they can sell it for. So um, the next thing we need to consider um, with ammonia is the concept of recycling. So with ammonia, um, we can basically recycle this as it goes through um, to make the process a lot more efficient. So at each pass of the gas through the reactor, only about 15% of this nitrogen here um, and the hydrogen combined is able to be converted into ammonia. So it's a fairly low yield um, for the amount which you put in. Um, this is obviously gonna vary from production system to production system, but generally it's around 15%. But with continual recycling, of the unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen, so continually taking it out and putting it back in, the overall conversion um, rate becomes about 98%. So we can see that by recycling the nitrogen and the hydrogen back through the system, um, we greatly increase that efficiency and overall conversion rate of the reaction, thus making it a bit more environmentally conscious and also um, just increasing the efficiency and the cost effectiveness for the production of this process because 15% is quite um, a low production rate whilst 98% is quite high. The next thing we need to consider is the proportions of nitrogen and hydrogen used in the system. So we can see the mixture of nitrogen and hydrogen um, in the reaction is a ratio of one to three. And so the mixture of nitrogen and hydrogen going into the reactor is gonna be one volume of nitrogen to three volumes of hydrogen because we know about Avogadro's law. And so Avogadro's law says that equal volumes of gases um, are going at the same temperature and the same pressure are gonna contain equal numbers of molecules. And so basically, um, we know that this means that the gases which are going into the reactor in the ratio of um, the gases that are going into the reactor are going to be in the ratio of one molecule of nitrogen to three molecules of hydrogen. And so that's basically the proportion which is demanded by the reaction.
So if we were to put in more nitrogen, it would be limited by the amount of hydrogen which we've put in. So there's no use putting more nitrogen into the system. Conversely, if we put more hydrogen into the system, it would be limited by the amount of nitrogen which is in the system. And so in some reactions, you might choose to use an excess of one of the reactants. Um, and so you would do this if it's particularly important to use up one, um, one of the particular reactants, like if you want to use up as much as possible of one of the other particular reactants. And so this may be if one of the reactants was particularly more expensive than the other, and the other was relatively inexpensive. However, this doesn't apply in this case of this particular reaction. So we need to just make sure that they're in their molar ratios for the reaction. Um, there's also always a downside to using anything other than, equa than the equation proportions. And so if you have an excess of one reactant, there will be molecules which will be passing through the reactor which can't possibly react because they're in excess, so there's nothing for them to react with. And so this is wasting reactor space, and particularly space on that surface of the catalyst. And so you don't want to be wasting the space on the surface of the catalyst because you then slow down the rate of reaction, and the reaction won't be as efficient as you were hoping for it to be. Also, it's very important to ideally remove all of the products and continually add reactants as the reaction progresses. And so we know that we can relate that back to Le Chatelier's principle, because if we are consistently taking out our ammonia product, remember if we're lowering the concentration, which is taking the ammonia out, it will force our reaction in the forward direction. We also know that if we're putting nitrogen and hydrogen in, we're increasing the reaction of the reactants and so increasing um, or increasing the concentration of our reactants and so if we increase the concentration of the reactants we're going to force the reaction in the forward direction and so if we force the reaction in the forward direction um, we're doing that sort of doubly by taking product out and um, putting reactant in and so that's going to then maximize the rate of that forward reaction. The next thing we need to consider is the temperature for this reaction. So this is to do with equilibrium considerations first of all. So you need to shift the position of equilibrium as far possible to the right in order to maximize the possible amount of ammonia in the equilibrium mixture. So the forward reaction um, which is producing ammonia, um, is an exothermic reaction. And so we remember with Le Chatelier's principle, um, this will be favoured um, in this particular reaction because it's exothermic if you lower the temperature. And that's because we know in an exothermic reaction, heat is produced, so it's considered like a product. So if we are lowering the temperature, it would be like taking products out of the system. Thus, if we were to take ammonia out of the system, we know the reaction would proceed in the forward direction. So if we're taking product, being heat, out of the system by making it colder, we then force the reaction in the forward direction to then produce more product as the reaction sees it to be same as removing product from the system. So it wants to re-attain that equilibrium. Um, so basically, if we lower the temperature, we'll favor the forward direction. And so in order to get as much ammonia as possible, we need the lowest possible temperature as possible. However, that then conflicts with considering rate of reaction and kinetic energy of the reaction. So we want to use a temperature of around 400 to 450 degrees Celsius. And so you may be thinking that is a very high temperature and that you would consider that to be too hot for it to be considered to be a low temperature to maximize the rate of the forward reaction. However, in industrial processes, 
um, extremely warm temperatures and extremely hot temperatures are often used in order to maximize the rate of reaction. Because we know when we consider rate of reaction, the lower the temperature you use, the slower the reaction becomes. Because when you put a lower temperature, the rate of um, the kinetic energy in the reactant molecules decreases. So those molecules are moving a lot slower. And so they're going to be less likely to collide um, at the correct orientation and at or above the activation energy in order to produce the required products. So if the manufacturer is trying to produce as much ammonia as possible per day, it makes no sense to try and achieve an equilibrium um, mixture which contains a very high proportion of ammonia if it's going to take several years for that equilibrium to be reached because the temperature is so low. And so you need the gases to reach the equilibrium within a very short amount of time so that they'll be in contact with the catalyst in the reactor. And so in this case, we use an industrial low temperature, which is 400 to 450 degrees Celsius. Um, but we still want that to be what we consider a fairly high temperature in order to maximize the rate of reaction. And so our compromise is 450 degrees or 400, between that 400 to 450 degrees Celsius because it's producing a reasonably high proportion of ammonia um, in the equilibrium mixture, um, even if it's only going to be 15%. And so um, we also need to then finally consider um, the economic considerations for this as well. So with the economic considerations, um, very high pressures are expensive to produce. Um, and you have to build obviously extremely strong pipes and containment vessels to withstand that. And so that's going to increase the capital costs when it's built. So the high pressures are gonna cost a lot to maintain. And so obviously they're going to go for a high pressure for the system, but obviously not too high. So they obviously the compromise for that is 200 atmospheres. So um, finally, we're just gonna sum up by talking about uh, what the harbor process is, um, just to give a bit of a background and a bit of the uses of what the harbor process is used for. So the harbor process um, was began with the use of manufacturing for explosives during the war. Um, and so previously, um, nitrogen had been considered to be a very stable molecule. However, they found that when you add um, hydrogen to this, um, in a ratio of one to three, um, and you use a catalyst, um, you can produce this very highly reactive material, and so that being ammonia. And so this was then, um, this was then obviously adapted um, in future use to then be used now for fertilizers um, and has basically ensured that the Western world can produce much of its farming um, in its farmland areas. So that's basically the harbor process and the production of ammonia. So now we're going.